Hello, this is Warlord. And as you can see, I have Studio Max open because what we're going to do today is create some crowds with the populate command, go through 3D Exchange, and then move those into iClone. The demo that I did generated a few questions from people who know basically how to do this, but couldn't get through the whole process. Now, it's not that complicated, but there are a few steps that you have to do in order to get it to work. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is select your viewport and dial it out a little because this is going to draw a rather large area. We're going to go ahead and create a flow, and that's going to draw a rather large area here at first. So let's pick Create Flow under the Populate tab, and you can see how large it is. Click once and draw. Now what I'm going to do here is undo, go out a little more so you can better see what I was doing. So click once, draw, Click to wherever you want to draw to, click again. Then if you want to go up or down, it doesn't matter, or curve, you just keep clicking. And then right click when you're finished. Now it's just like what it looks like. This is the flow of how these characters are going to move. The pink being female, the blue being male. And if we were to go ahead and try simulating, nothing's going to happen right now because we haven't actually run the simulation. So what we're going to do is go up here to where it says number of frames. iClone is 1800 frames. That translates to 900 frames in Studio Max. So I'm going to put in 900 and then I'm going to simulate it. Now this is where it draws a character and animates it for every one of these uh, markers. Now we're also I'm not going to go into the details like I said right now. There are parameters that we can go in and set to tell these how to do certain things. But right now it's creating 23 pedestrians. And it looks like it's already done it. So let's take a look at what we have here. There you can see what we've got going. Let me click on this viewport. Oops, let me change. And let's click play. And as you can see, We have our crowd going with just a few clicks. Now as to idle areas, you can draw one out, <clears throat> excuse me, you can draw one out, or we have a square, or a circle, or a free hand. So let's go ahead and go to free hand and draw one out. As you can see, there's nothing to it. Square. circle. Now we can go ahead and simulate those. Okay, now there's your idle areas. Now there's also sitting. And I believe this may be new to 2015. I'm not sure. This is 2015 I'm using. Again, okay, we'll go into this a little later. You can put this in whatever order that you want to put them in. And you can use the align tools to line them up. What you see here on the marker, blue is male, like I said, pink is female. You can go in here and change that. Let's just go ahead and right now and simulate. And then there you see we have the people that are sitting. So now all we have to do from here is make sure we just select our characters because characters are all we want to select. And then there's a command that you're going to want to type in. And what I'm doing right now is going over to my clipboard and getting the command. This command is also listed in the help file. I know a lot of us have never heard of those things. We put the command into the listener. We hit enter. And now what it's doing is baking the animation into each one of these characters. Okay, now it's finished. Now that we're finished, we no longer need the props that came with them that, that we built for this. We can just get rid of those. And now we have a crowd that's ready to export. Now we're going to export an FBX. Export them all at once. And there are a couple of settings you're going to want to make in FBX. Of course you're going to want animation checked. And you're going to want bake animation. But the most important thing is to come down to FBX file format, and it may be closed up, 
open it, and make sure you select FBX 2011. That's what 3D Exchange needs for this to work. So make sure you change the FBX file format to 2011. I'm not sure if binary is important or not. I've never actually changed that. Then we just go ahead and hit OK. You may get an error message on textures or something like that, but just hit OK and go on. For the most part, everything's going to be fine. So what we're going to do here is let it export, and then I'll go ahead and cut back to after it's finished. OK, it's writing the FBX file. So it has just now finished exporting, and now we're going to be ready to go into 3D Exchange. All I've done is load the crowd, and that can take a little bit depending on the size of the crowd. Now, if you're loading a really large crowd, then you may find that these uh, buttons up here stay grayed out, and so do these buttons here. But that's all right. It's just working hard. You can actually still go ahead and export by, uh, I'm sorry, wrong one. You can still go ahead and export by hitting File and exporting like that. Uh, for some reason, some crowds just tend to overload it because it really wasn't ever built to do anything like this. But now the first thing you're going to want to do is smooth it. And the easiest way to smooth the crowd is to hit select all down here and just wait for it to select it. And there's not much we have to do in here. All right, now it's selected it. I usually go to 99, don't go over it. I'm going to auto smooth. And now I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to rename this to something more suitable to get that long garbage name out of it. I'm just going to call it Crowd Motion. This is what you'll see on your Perform menu. And it might also be a good time to go ahead and come in here and just click F2 and rename it. But you can always do that in iClone. And now we're ready to go ahead and export. Be sure that you check Export Animation. Now I've already tested this, so we're just exporting over it. Okay. Now we're going to be ready to go into iClone. Now we're ready to go ahead and put it in iClone. Of course, most of you can take it from here. We're just going to double click on the crowd that we just exported. Right click, perform crowd motion. And there's your instant crowd. Now, let's take a look at a few things that are happening here and an easy way to solve that. You'll see some people jumping around. Well, there's origin points, portals where they originate from. And like if you look right here in this part of the screen, you'll see this second green shirt's going to disappear because it cycles. Let me get enough. There you go. Now that's not too hard to deal with. You can either have them, you can place a prop here for them to walk into, it looks like, or something like that. Or you can block it off with a wall or something. Now occasionally, you're going to find some that jump across because they jump from one end of the portal where they started to the other. Well, and I don't really, I imagine we do have some here. Let's just take a quick look. Oh, we just, one just shot by. One of the green ones up there. This guy right here. Let me, you can only select these with your texture tool. But what I'm going to do is just use opacity to take it out. It's this one right here. And if you'll notice, it jumps completely, just slides over. That's because it's going from one end of the portal to the other. So what I'm going to do is pull this all the way to the back, I mean all the way to the beginning, before I hit the opacity. That way I won't animate its opacity going on and off. And we're just going to turn it off. And you may have to go through this and find, usually there's not over three or four of them, uh, especially in a crowd this size. And what I do is just use opacity, turn them off from the beginning. There's another one just jumped up here. Because you're not really losing anything when you do that. And now, of course, in, in iClone, if you want it to run the full length of the timeline, then you'll have to let it run when you do the initial perform. But this is really all there is to it to get something into iClone. If you have 5.5, uh, uh, or excuse me, you have iClone 5, you can go ahead and build your scene in it, put some dummies where you want it, export all that back out through 3D Exchange into Studio Max for exact crowd placement. Then you can go back in to iClone, either version 5 or version 6, from that point. Okay, now we're back in Studio Max, and let's take a look at how we can get some of this stuff to work. Let's take sitting, for example. When you click, before you release, if you want it to face a certain way, like people at a table or something like that, 
hold down control and turn it. Click again and you'll notice that uh, it'll actually put a line from one to the other. So do not let up off the left mouse button until you have it pointing the direction you want it to go, like say to that person. Let's say this person's looking at this one, these two are looking at it. Let's say we have another one over here looking at this one also. I'm going to hold it down, hold down control. And then this is how we would center our conversation. Oh, now I didn't do that too well, did I? Or that either for that matter. And for me, I just go back in, do the same thing, hold down control. And that way you have them sitting where you want them. Now you can also, of course, come in and adjust placement things like that, then you go ahead and simulate. Now another thing you can do is come into each one of these, we're not going to get into real specifics, but you can regenerate and change them with this appearance UI here. And uh, this is clothing character, you just want to experiment with things like this, I'm just making you available, or making you aware of it. We'll wait until it finishes. And then that changed that character from what it was to another one. Uh, there are little things like that. Now that takes care of sitting characters. And of course, it is pink and blue. That can be changed over here, male to female. But you would have to regenerate your characters and things like that. So, let's move on now. Oh, and here's another thing. This is I'm glad I did it that way. Since we did not bake the animation of these, the only way to get rid of this properly is to remove them through the simulation, then delete. Now let's take a quick look at flow. And we're pretty big here, but that'll work. Well, I'll say it will. It doesn't work too well. But what I want to do, here we go. This will help. Now, we get in here to this flow, and as you can see, here's width, things like that. So, 300 definitely cuts down how many people you're going to have in it as far as lanes go. Now, what I need to do there was just right-click to finish drawing it. And I'll switch off of that tool. Density, fast or slow, these are all pretty self-explanatory. How many people you want running? I want just a few male versus female things like that you can also type in random numbers here for seeds now you use one portal automatically and they can actually spawn from two portals but we're not going to get into that right now I'm just going to show you the basics of this so this is basically how you would control how your flows are going to work then you would just go ahead and simulate and once it finishes simulating you have your crowd set up and you'd go through the same bake procedure as we did before. Now let's go ahead and take a look at idle areas right quick. As you can see here we have your usual density, singles or groups, Let's say that you wanted this to be uh, a concert crowd and you wanted it to mainly be singles. Well, you'd cut that back like that. Groups of threes or twos you can change here. Again, males or females. But what you're going to need is a place for them to, to orient towards. So what I do is we'll just go ahead and use a dummy in this case. And we'll say that that was the stage that you wanted them to see. So what we want to do now is first of all we can change our orientation over here you can change orientation and spread this is more of a chaotic spread or random spread this makes them all point the same direction when you go all the way over here and you can orient them like this and that's great they're all facing towards that stage but they're also facing to a nowhere on some of it let's say you wanted to be drawn inward to the stage well that's where we would click face and we would select the stage or whatever it is now you'll notice all those arrows are drawing inward. So we'll come in and simulate. 
And this is where you could get like a concert crowd or something if you want. You can increase the density. We can go to more singles, change our groups, and re-simulate. There's not that much to the populate command. And it's not perfect. It doesn't have a crowd for every situation. There are also a high poly set, which you can come up here and change. But in order to do that, you would have to download a large file from Automax, which is available free. And it would really increase the poly count. So it kind of makes it unusable for what we're doing. But as you can see, just creating a large crowd and then moving it over into iClone is not going to be that difficult if you have access to Studio Max that has the populate command. I believe that's 2014 and 2015. I hope this helps.